Hi guys and welcome. On this video we're going to understand the dispute a debit card purchased quickly and efficiently and understand the difference between debit card dispute to credit card chargeback. There are many differences between a debit card and a credit card. One of them is that debit cards do not have the same consumer protections as credit cards. Therefore disputing a credit card charge is more challenging than for a credit card. When you dispute a credit card purchase the timing can still give you the opportunity to withhold payment. In a debit card, you've already technically paid for the purchase, and your bank will have to decide whether or not to restore the funds they've already taken from your account. You have a better chance of success in a debit card dispute if you act fast and are able to present shreds of evidence such as a receipt. The first question is, when do you dispute a debit card charge? Anytime you have a disagreement with a merchant, or contest about any charge they made to your debit card, this qualifies as a cardholder dispute. Some examples. You initiated and subsequently canceled a transaction, but the merchant still charged you for it. For example, you reserved a hotel room online, and later you canceled it in accordance with their cancellation guides, but the booking website still charged you for the room. You purchased an item through your debit card, but later returned the item to the merchant, but they never returned your money you've paid back into your account. The merchant charged you an erroneous amount for a purchase. For example, they debited $500 instead of 50 you have an issue with the quality of the products or services that the merchant provided. What about fraudulent debit card transactions? Technically, a fraudulent transaction is one where you as the cardholder do not know who used your card and can declare with absolute certainty that you have no knowledge of such transaction. The bank will require you to sign an affidavit stating that you were not aware of who made or completed those transactions or transactions in question. See examples here. But take note. The bank will not tolerate individuals who file false or unsubstantiated fraud claims. In fact, they may even charge a fee or penalty for doing so. The basic distinction to know whether a transaction is fraudulent or disputable is whether the cardholder knowingly or willingly made the transaction with the merchant in the first place. There are many reasons why a dispute may arise between the cardholder and a merchant. Some of them are overcharging the cardholder, charges for undelivered merchandise, or continuous charging for a subscription that the cardholder has already cancelled. If the cardholder has never initiated or authorized a transaction which the bank processed, the cardholder may file for a fraud claim. Now let's discuss about the difference between credit card to debit card chargeback. Let's face it, between a problem with a debit card purchase and one with the credit card, you're more likely to have a better success in a dispute with the credit card. You enjoy better consumer protection as a credit card holder, and you'd be able to keep the money you spend in your account while threshing out the problems with the merchant. But don't lose hope. In a debit card purchase, you can file a dispute, and you might be able to get your money back. As a credit card holder, you have the right to dispute a charge when there is a billing error or other issues that you can't work out with the merchant. The law provides you with these rights through the Federal Truth in Lending Act and the Fair Credit Billing Act. With credit cards, you have the right to withhold repayment to the credit card company for any purchase which you file a dispute after a merchant refuses to resolve a problem with their goods or services. Here are some cases that would call for a dispute. You ordered an item that never arrived. For example, you ordered a camper trailer tent for $600 from an online camping equipment store, but they never delivered the item to you. The merchandise they delivered was defective or not the same as described. For example, you ordered a 21-speed bike on display at a store. When your order arrives, it has substitute cheap parts and not the original parts like the one on display. The merchant charged you for more than the stated price. For instance, you bought a high-end bag on sale at 35% off, but the merchant charged you for the full amount and refused to refund the supposed discount. However, for a debit card holder, the law does not provide the same protections. Consumers who experience similar problems with their debit card purchases still have a recourse with their concerns. If you file a dispute over a debit card charge, it is incumbent for your bank to look into the matter. Disputing a debit card charge has a couple of steps you should take into account. If you find a charge on your bank account statement that you're not familiar with, immediately check if it matches your card use or spending. Thieves will often try with small purchases, and if the account holder does not notice or fails to act, they will follow up with a large purchase. You can always check a charge against the name merchant on your statement and match it with your past purchases. When you want to dispute a charge, you have to call your bank and ask them to cancel the error so that they can restore the balance of your account to its previous level. But do take note that it may take up to 10 business days to make a final decision. You can make your request through the bank's customer service hotline. The bank usually posts the phone number on their website or the back of the card itself. Report the fraudulent charges immediately and don't forget to provide as much detail as possible. For example, provide a copy of the receipt that shows a different price from what the merchant charged you or show that a purchase has been made online in a store where you have not created an account. 
Even if you've called the bank and talked with a customer service representative, follow up your dispute with a written letter. Make sure you indicate your bank account information, your name, your report reference number, if the customer service rep gave you one, when you first noticed the fraudulent charges, and when you first reported them. If you want a sample letter, you can go to the website of the Federal Trade Commission. Keep a copy of all the documents you send to the bank and write down the times and dates of all the follow-up calls and messages you make. You would find it more difficult to dispute a charge if you lost or compromised your PIN, or if the thieves were able to guess it. An authorized person who uses your correct PIN, or security code, or makes it appear that you've authorized a purchase. In general, PIN purchases are more difficult to dispute than purchases that you sign for. Choosing to process your debit card transaction as a signature-based credit card purchase will force your bank to allow the dispute rules set by credit card companies. This could get you a better consumer protection and get a favorable decision quickly if you support your argument with evidence such as purchase receipts. Many people considering to cancel their debit card in case of fraud. You may not need to cancel your debit card if it's just one fraudulent transaction that you're disputing or when the merchant overcharged you for an unauthorized transaction. If you want to protect yourself from being exposed to fraud, just change your PIN. However, if you suspect that your personal information has been compromised, canceling your card might be a lot better. An indication that thieves have stolen your sensitive info is if you notice multiple transactions are showing up over a short period of time. Before you cancel your debit card, you might want to update your details with merchants to have your saved card information. These are merchants where you have online subscriptions, or where you have automatic payment agreements such as monthly subscription fee or new chapter. In the case of subscriptions, you will have to contact each merchant to update your information details before the cutoff date for the payment so that your products, services, or access will continue. A debit card dispute can come out for or against your favor. There's no guarantee that you will be successful all the time. However, there are steps that you can take to increase your chances. Here are three of them. First, get in touch with the seller first, regardless of whether you used a credit or debit card. You may be able to resolve the issue if you directly deal with the retailer or a service provider first. Second thing to remember is to be reasonable. Customers that charge back is a remedy when the merchant is in the wrong and not in cases when the customer simply changes their mind about the purchase they've made. If you buy something and you decide you don't like the color, you need to take that up with the merchant. The last thing you do is make sure that you are fully prepared to prove your case. When you file for a dispute to your bank, you should be able to clearly show why they should decide in your favor by providing compelling evidence to support your claim. For example, you might include a copy of the receipt that shows a merchant charged you $129 for an item that they advertise in an online catalog as $89. Or provide them with a service contract or emails from the merchant promising a refund that never came or a photo of the defective item. That's it for now. On our website, you can find more posts as well as calculators and other financial tools. Have you disputed a debit card purchase? We would love to know your thoughts, so feel free to share them with us in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube to get more free financial educated videos.